Speaking of, of brand new categories, we have Look See Labs here, and you would not have seen this two years ago. So, hello, gentlemen. You have six minutes to present, followed up by questions. You ready to go? Yes, yeah. we are. All right, starting now. Hi, I'm Pear from Look See Labs. We're creating jewelry wearables that fuse art, technology, and fashion. And this is Look See Bracelet. This is our first product. It's also the world's first always on flexible display jewelry in the world. This all started when we were working with wearables for multiple years with Motorola and Nokia. We were exposed to all the wearables out there and we found them quite limiting. And so you have a small screen which is normally off and it was awkward to scroll and tap to try to find information. So we said, what if we have a large glanceable display that wrapped around your wrist? And what if this display was actually always on without using any power? And we realized we were onto something quite special, something much more than an extension of your phone. It was actually an opportunity for self-expression. So this is fashion driven by technology. And something like this has never before been possible. And what is that? Well, it's a bracelet that can put an infinite number of designs on it. So you can change it whenever you like, as you like, by tapping into our artwork collections, or you use your phone's camera. So people are always looking to dress for the occasion, be that simple work, or a cocktail party, an elegant dinner, or heading out for a late night dancing. So let me show you how this actually works. So on the iPhone app, I'm going to be showing that we can write, send patterns, information, and photographs. So we're going to start off with some patterns. So say a woman is at work and she's heading out, so she wants a, a little bit edgier image, so let's pick the snake skin and sum that off. So the iPhone is actually doing the heavy lifting here. It's encoding the image, it's asymmetrically compressing it, and then sending it via Bluetooth low energy to the bracelet. And on the bracelet, it's being stored in a local memory. So there you can actually run a slideshow without the iPhone needing to be nearby. So the bracelet is always on, or sorry, the display is always on, but the circuitry is actually normally off. And that's how we can get an incredible one year battery life from this device. There we are with the snake skin. So my wife actually likes having current information on her bracelet. So the iPhone collects all kinds of information that we can display. That could be step counts. That could be the QR code to pay for coffee. Time, of course. A moving map that updates when you're moving. And Apple notifications. And all of these are actually customizable. So you can change the size and send those off to the bracelet as well. So Apple notifications, we actually filter. So we just show you the important ones by keyword, sender, and channel. Right? So that was patterns and that was information. I'm a bit creative, so let's actually make a custom image. So I'm going to load a photograph. And I'm going to pick my youngest son, who's hamming it up a little bit, and crop him. And I'm going to add some text. See if I can doodle here. Something like that. And change the contrast a little bit. How about that one? And send that off to the bracelet. So we actually have an exclusive license for this flexible display. So this is a unique opportunity for us. And we also have patents filed combining art and information. Voila. Now I can smile all day when I see his face. Okay. So back to the screen. So as you can see, we're leveraging art, technology, and fashion to create something completely new. And that's exactly what Swatch did in the 80s when they created their colorful wristwatches. So they revolutionized their industry, which is what we would like to do with ours. So Swatch last year sold 18 million units. So that's why we're interested. Just that is a $2 billion industry. But Luxie is actually much more than that. We compete in some senses with smartwatches. And the market for smartwatches, that's exploding. So we showed the look to hundreds of men and women, and they all have the same reaction, which is, wow. But our beachhead market is actually women who buy fine jewelry. They love the solid silver look -see. And in in-depth interviews, they reveal they would pay $300 to $600 for that. 
So we built many prototypes, including at the Highway 1 Accelerator. We're now building units for friends and family testing, as well as seeding at Choice Boutiques. And we are launching here at TechCrunch Battlefield, which we're incredibly thrilled to be part of. Next, we are crowdfunding in Q1, building our brand presence and online sales, and ultimately, distribution through retail. So this is a brand new canvas, and we want to work with designers to build limited editions and let them explore different materials, different shapes. We want to invest with artists to create custom artwork for the image collections and create a marketplace for them so that they earn commissions on those sales. So look -see. Infinite possibilities for your style. So sign up at looksealabs.com and share what you want to show on your Looksee. Thanks so much. Very good presentation. Yes. Okay, so uh, sorry. You go first. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm a little bit concerned about the design because uh, let's say that I'm at the conference like CES, for example, and there are a lot of geeky girls here. So almost everyone has this bracelet and I sit next to the I sit next to the Susan and we have oh you, you have Luxi I, I have too and even if the design uh, that you upload is different it's still the same product and I'm not sure if it's this kind of customization that I would like to have uh, on my hand mm -hmm. and the second thing uh, I'm concerned is the size uh, of the bracelet because I always have a problem with uh, watches, uh, bracelets, that I have to shorten it. Okay, so we, ha we have a couple different, we're going to have different sizes available. I don't think the size should be any issue. Um, also being a cup bracelet, you can adjust it slightly. As far as um, not having the same product, well, that's kind of an interesting issue because, I mean, if you look at we, how well, many we'd we'd actually it. love it if all the women had looks. Yeah. We have this issue. To end with. <laughs> right. I mean, if, but then again, if you also look at how many people might have an iPhone and the competition that goes in there. I mean, I think it's interesting to look at how the look is going into uh, a new territory that kind of combines both the technology um, awareness with a fashion sense. And so I think we're privileged to be able to sort of take up one foot in both pools and kind of merge those two areas together to kind of carve a new territory. And so I think that the rules may not be quite the same thing. Furthermore, we're also going to be working with different designers to have different models of looks available as well. So, a couple questions. One, what do you think the business model is for the artists to do? Are you thinking like there's a royalty piece for them to do the designs for you? Do you sort of work that through? So, we were talking to artists just regarding exactly that. They're actually approaching us to say, hey, how do I get my artwork onto this thing? So, it's, we're encouraged that there is an interest in this. And yes, it is a royalty based mechanism we're talking about. And that's complicated and time consuming because I've lived through that, let me just tell you. Um, another thing, is what's the price point? You said three to six hundred, yep. but you didn't. So it's going to be in that range. Yes, it depends a bit on the materials. Because when I look at these designs, and it's a really, it's really innovative and interesting. And I've done a lot of research in wearables, and so I, I love what you guys are doing. But I have a feeling that your target audience of thirty-five to forty-five, because they like fine jewelry, you might have been artificially swayed by a very high price point. Because when I look at these designs and. The idea is that everything's impermanent. You can put, it's almost like a friendship bracelet, right? Like I can take like Instagram photos. I have a feeling your audience is going to skew younger than you think. So we get that very often. Um, people are suggesting, how about a slap bracelet for the teenagers at $99 at the end cap of Target? So that's a very different brand proposition that what we're interested in pursuing. But yes, there are multiple avenues to pursue. What is the fundamental cost of the display for you? Um, that's a bit proprietary, but our bomb is roughly $100 in this configuration. In that configuration. Yeah. How far could you get the bomb down? Um, we'll I, I understand that's, that's, that's volume, right? So we're talking you know, units of, say, ten, tens of thousands. What happens when there's units of millions or tens of millions? We're not at that point yet. Yeah, I think probably the, the biggest thing, I, I, I was very careful not to ask the first question, given that it's uh, a jewelry item, because I, I think I think my fellow panelists hit on the same thing, and this is something that's very difficult to overstate, which is when two guys show up at a party and they wear the same thing, mm -hmm. they both think it's funny. Yeah. They, they just think it's funny. Mm -hmm. Two women show up and it's, it's awkward. Mm -hmm. you know? And I think with this device, it's incredibly important to think about that dynamic because I will say, because I, I met you guys at the Highway 1 incubator a few months ago, mm -hmm. and I will say, having seen a lot of hardware 
it's incredibly high quality, this display. I was completely blown away by how good it is. So if they actually put it in your hands right, right. and you held it, you'd be like, wow, this is amazing. It actually looks like it's enameled on here. So it's really well done. So I, I think the, the promise, you have the ability to deliver on the promise, but it's this question of people that are in your target demographic having the same thing as opposed to the tem target demographic that the two panelists suggested to you feels like the right mm. direction for you to go. And that's where I feel like you could really break through because you have um, young women, you have, you know, I have several teenagers, et cetera. They're all looking to connect and express and do things and to do it in a way where they can connect with their social networks, et cetera. It feels like it's a much more powerful way to take advantage of the trends as opposed to fighting uh, this basic consumer uh, headwind yep. uh, that all three of us identified for you. That's so, great. Yeah. It, it is all correct what you said. Um, we're aiming a little bit at a, a Tesla-like strategy, so a little bit niche or smaller volume, higher priced, mm -hmm. and then yes, right a curve down to larger volumes. Would you consider not building a brand at all and licensing this to someone like a Rebecca Minkoff who's been like express a lot of interest in wearables mm -hmm. and say like she's got the audience, she's got the following, she can make this thing beautiful and she knows what to do with the display for yeah. her audience. Yeah. So, so either build it for uh, interested parties and I think literally everyone is building a wearable that's here at CES. Um, so we're certainly open to manufacturing for them or some type of co-branding or licensing. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? How are you thinking about where you want to go with the application side of it? Mm -hmm. um, Lots of possibilities. Yeah. I mean, everything is really under the sun. You can go there because you're, the power of the phone now has become so strong that you can pretty much tap into anything you want. And you can have the GPS locate to it so that you know, when you're in the right place, right time, your tickets pop up on your wrist. You can start doing things like perhaps sending images to your friends' bracelet if you develop a network of things like that. Mm -hmm. So you can start having that kind of Instagram-like approach with your friends. Right. Um, I mean, it's Snapchat really, integration. Yes. Yeah, I mean, yes. it's really a matter of kind of flushing that out. I think both, as well as what you were saying earlier, in terms of the design of the product itself, as well as with the software side, flushing out with designers and understanding what to do, how to best optimize that, and not get too far ahead of ourselves and try and get the perfect thing up front, right. but just start working, seeing what people like, getting response feedback, right. and seeing how it works. And, and we also and we also want to have a social aspect. So two bracelets nearby at a party, they could be swapping images. Or if we're best friends, we, we could be sending each, each other images across the country. Yeah. You just proved our point. <laughs> right. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, you guys. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks you. Much. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I can't wait to get your notifications on my wrist. That would be very good. <laughs> you could have Robert Scoble sending you yes, yes. constant notifications. That's what the world yeah. needs. Well, Rob, Susan, and Carolina, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I thank really you. appreciate it. Thanks for having it. us. Yeah, it's great. It, it was a great session. We're going to be back live tomorrow, starting at 11 a.m. with four more companies and three new judges. And then later in the day, tomorrow at 2 o'clock, we're going to do it all again. Then on Thursday at 1 o'clock, we're going to have the finals where four companies will compete for $50,000 and then uh, the Metal Man Trophy. Thank you very much. We'll see you later. <laughs>